my peoples from Graffiti Kings in the UK. Let's do it, fellas. Y'all are gonna hate this video? Kiss my ass, I don't give a fuck. It's real New York writers just breaking real on all of y'all. This is how things work. Nobody can ever say to me in my face, no writer, no anybody, that Blade was the biggest king that ever wore trains, period. I didn't really hit the yards and stuff when I was coming up because there were just too many good blokes out there. And, I mean, blokes would come 15, 20 deep and they would steal my shit. They would strip me butt naked and just leave me in my Adidas in the train yard. That's how they used to do it back in the day in the early, late 70s, early 80s. That's how they did because we all in train yards. Graffiti and the style it brings uh, is the visual language of a generation, if not a couple of generations at this point. So uh, the reality is it's not where you're from, it's where you're at. It doesn't matter if you're in Scandinavia or you're in Singapore or you're in Brooklyn. Another way of doing you. Um, so that's my answer is to do you. Whatever feels right, wherever you're from, whether it's the style of your neighborhood or something that's influenced you across the globe, um, do what feels right. Like, you know, uh, work from your heart and then figure it out with your head and take it from there. To any real true writers, you're gonna get hate. The more you're hated, and the more niggas talk shit about you, it means whatever the fuck you're doing, you're doing it right. The more you bomb, the more a whole crew is gonna go against you. Cope knows this wholeheartedly. Cope, Per, T Kid, Sess, anyone from FX, Tats crew, they all know this. The more you're hated, it means the more you're doing your job right. And there's gonna be a lot of bullshit. There's gonna be times you might have to knuckle up. In New York, I'm telling you dead ass, there's writers that talk shit and they go against the legends and they do get stomped out. It is still a violent crime. It is an outlaw art. Just like the bikers, like Hells Angels or anyone else, it is an outlaw art. But I can guarantee you this, a dude who's painting in fucking Alaska, the North Pole, if he heard someone last night and he's on his way on a plane here now, we'll find out in New York before he lands who the fuck he dissed. And when he gets here, we're gonna be cool, but we will ask him, yo, why'd you diss this dude? That nigga painted this fucking icicle, and, and you heard them, what? Believe me, it's a tight-knit culture, and if you, worst thing you can ever be in graph, period, a rat. You rat one time. Cops, bobbies, I don't care where you're from, MI6, MI5, all of these niggas are full of shit. They're gonna scare the fuck out of you. They're gonna come after your wallet, your money. They're gonna tell you, we know who you're writing with, we know you've done $10,000 worth of damage. Fuck them. Until they show you a goddamn photo, fuck them. They're full of shit. Get me my attorney. That's all you gotta say. Get me my attorney and keep your mouth shut. The minute you become a fucking rat, you're fucked in this culture for life. For life. And I don't care how nice you think you are. Rat one time on any of your fucking squad. Believe me, there's, there's Tats Cruz, How and Nazem. Y'all know who I'm talking about. There's people in Germany. I'm not gonna mention your name, but you know who you are. Fume in Germany. You a trick, nigga. You make me look bad, and I'm the original motherfucker. Fume, you're fucking up. Watch your mouth, son. The true essence of hip-hop. Bout it, bout it. Let's battle. You think you got me today? All right, you might even win today. But next week, I got you. Watch. Don't fucking sleep. That's why it went global. It was a battle. There was a time in New York in the 70s where you might have had a thousand writers, and they were just battling for fame with throw-up letters. After the 70s became the 80s, and they started pushing the letter concepts, that's when I got in. 79, 80, 81, 82, that's when a lot of stuff got developed. If you love what you do, let your soul scream, dead ass. If you love what the fuck you do in graph, and everyone is going to hate it and shit on you, and you still do it, respect. Because that's what made it global. It's from your soul. Let your fucking soul scream. Let the planet hate it. It was a gift from fucking God. It is a new art. Hieroglyphics, everything. We, we got the new hieroglyphics. Believe it, and it will live forever. There'll be that one piece that you might not even know that you did it as a bullshit piece on a tunnel, on a wall somewhere that'll never get buffed, and it'll run for 20, 30 years. And you will bug out when you see it in a book 30 years later. 
and you get love in the book because it's the book you wanted to be in with all the top players from your world. It's an art form that's not loved, it's not taught in universities, but it's a global art form. Why? Why? Because it's taught in schools, it's taught in lunchrooms, it's not taught in universities. It's one friend to another friend. It's usually people that are struggling and ain't got jack shit to work with either. But that's where it comes from. We have a voice. We have a speech. Know us. We are here. I, I might be from the hood. I might be the brokest motherfucking hood rat you've ever seen. But you look at my name every day on the train. But when you go to work, you've seen my tag on every fucking building for a hundred blocks. Started like 70, 79, really looking at the subway cars in New York City, you know, and just hanging out on them, you know, living in the South Bronx. You know, it was poor back then and, and playing in abandoned buildings and, 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 and hanging out and playing in subway cars. That's all we had back then, besides school and chilling at home. And I could never be home, I always was outside. So just hanging out on the subway trains in like 70, 79 is what did it to me. You know, seeing the big pieces go by by Common and Blade. These are the dudes that I looked up to when I was a kid and looking at their stuff. And my cousin, he was like a local graffiti artist. He wasn't a big writer, he just tagged in the neighborhood. So just hanging with him, he just kind of like took me on the subway train and just looking at all the pieces just really set it off for me. You know, to be a king back then was to be, like have the most tags, throw ups, pieces, tags on the insides, you know, top to bottom, hold cars, burners. You was the king of the ones, king of the twos. I was king of the fours. Then I took king of the twos and fives. Blade was a king. You know, once the train era died, that was it. Nobody can go bombing in the street today and say they're a king. It doesn't make any sense. You know, there's times I'm just in my house and I'll put on Star Wars or Wild Style and I just get open. Like, there's this shit that comes in me. It's like, a, it's, it's almost like sex, bro. And you see a girl and it's something about a woman's ass, bro. When she like bends over, it's like the animal comes out of you. So it's almost like same thing with graffiti. When I see like wild style style, I turn into this beast. And I'm like, I gotta do a train. I gotta, and then sometimes like, nah, you gotta chill. You're in your forties now. But I'm like, I gotta do one. It's like, it's bogged down. It's like a drug, dude. Shit, I've been ranked, man, graffiti since 1973. First I started with gangs, 77, I got shot. Got my name T-Kid and started killing trains, man, like crazy. And it's been history ever since. I haven't stopped writing, man.